hi everyone today in this video let us see what are the differences between the depolarizing and non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers neuromuscular blockers are classified as depolarizing as well as non depolarizing so what are the drugs included in this category so depolarizing only one drug is there that is a saxamethonium which is also called as saxanalcholine Whereas in the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, we have one of the drug d tubocurarin which is one of the natural product. Nowadays, we have so many synthetic products in the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So drugs like the pancuronium, pipicuronium, vecuronium, rocuronium, atracurium, cisatracurium, doxacurium. All these are the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So that you can see that they are ending with the curonium and curium. Within this category, one of the drug is short acting, that is the mivacurium. So all these are the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. Now let us see how these drugs are going to differ. Depolarizing and non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers differ in so many aspects. For example, action on nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, action on muscle contractions, action on heart, and the type of block they are going to produce, reversal of the block. That means what are the drugs used to reverse the block produced by these neuromuscular blockers, side effect profile and duration of action. In all these aspects, depolarizing and non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers show some, some differences as well as we have the similarities. So we are going to discuss all these things in this video. So let us start with the first one, action on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Nicotinic acetylcholine receptors present at the neuromuscular junction, they are pentameric in nature and their inotropic receptors. What is the action of uh, these two types of drugs on these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors? Depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to stimulate these receptors so they are acting like agonists. On the other hand, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to block these receptors thereby they act like antagonists. Suppose this is a neuromuscular junction and now the depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to acting on the postsynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors thereby they are going to act like agonists and they are going to open the sodium channels and they produce the muscle depolarization and when these drugs are going to acting on the postsynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors they can produce a persistent depolarization as well as the desensitization of the receptors in this way initially they produce the muscle contractions but later they produce the muscle paralysis on the other hand, non-depolarizing drugs are going to block the postsynaptic receptors, thereby they are going to block the opening of the sodium channels and depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane. At the same time, these drugs can also act on the presynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, which are actually auto-stimulatory in nature. So when these receptors are going to be blocked, the release of the acetylcholine is going to be reduced. In this way, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to act on the both postsynaptic as well as presynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. This is one of the main difference between the depolarizing and non-depolarizing. Very high dose depolarizing neuromuscular blockers can also have some action on the presynaptic receptors where they can block these receptors. This is observed only at a very high dose of these depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So in this way, Depolarizing are acting like agonists and non-depolarizing acting like antagonists, but both of these drugs produce the muscle paralysis. Second one is the action on the muscle contractions. So suppose this is the narrow terminal at the neuromuscular junction and this is the skeletal muscle and you can observe the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are present on the muscle as well as the presynaptic narrow terminal. The depolarizing neuromuscular blockers can act on the postsynaptic receptors and once they are going to act, they produce a depolarization of the muscle so that they can produce the initial muscle fasciculations. So initial muscle contractions are observed with the depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. But because of their persistent action, they cause the desensitization of the receptors as well as the muscle is going to be depolarized. So it is unable to contract and we can produce, we can observe a muscle paralysis. So whenever we are going to give a stimuli to the presynaptic nerve terminal, we can observe the release of the acetylcholine from the narrow terminal, but it cannot produce the muscle contraction because the postsynaptic receptors are going to be desensitized. And when we give the stimuli directly to the muscle, it cannot produce any muscle contraction because muscle is in the 
depolarized condition. In this way, depolarizing neuromuscular blockers will not affect the presynaptic receptors. So whenever we give a stimuli, the neurotransmitters can be released as it is. Now let us see the case of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. These drugs are going to acting on the both presynaptic receptors as well as the postsynaptic receptors. So when we are going to give the stimuli to the directly to the muscle, we can see the response because the muscle is directly stimulated and it can be contracted. But when we give the stimuli to the presynaptic nerve terminal, particularly when we give the repeated stimuli, the acetylcholine is not released according to this uh, repeated stimuli because the presynaptic auto stimulatory receptors are inhibited. So by repeated stimuli, the acetylcholine is not released and we can observe a tetanic fade with the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So this is one of the important identification of the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers which produce a tetanic fade by repeated stimuli of the presynaptic nerve terminals. Third one is the action on the heart. On the heart, M2 receptors are present and whenever we use the depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, Actually, these drugs are going to act on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, but they also have some action on the muscanic receptors like the M2 receptors. Since they are acting like agonists, they also stimulate the M2 receptors because of the agonistic action. On the other hand, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers act like antagonists, so they will block the M2 receptors. In this way, depolarizing drugs are going to stimulate the parasympathetic activation, thereby they decrease the rate of contraction. Whereas non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to block the cholinergic transmission, thereby they increase the rate of contraction. We know that the parasympathetic system is going to decrease the rate of contraction by acting through the M2 receptors. So depolarizing will decrease the rate of contraction, non-depolarizing are going to increase the rate of contraction. Fourth one is the type of block. So how the block of these depolarizing and non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to be reversed? For example, if you take the depolarizing drugs, they are going to act on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Similarly, acetylcholine can also act on these receptors. So these drugs are going to act like the acetylcholine. So both are similar and both are going to produce the depolarization of the postsynaptic membrane. On the other hand, non-depolarizing drugs are going to act like the competitive agents and they are going to compete with the acetylcholine, thereby they block the acetylcholine receptors. So non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers produce a competitive block with the acetylcholine. Fifth one is the reversal of block. So depolarizing neuromuscular blockers act like acetylcholine. So when they are going to bind to these receptors, initially they produce the muscle fasciculations, but later they produce a desensitization of these receptors. Now what is the action of the acetylcholine at these receptors? So acetylcholine levels within the synaptic cleft are going to be controlled by one of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase enzyme. So when we use the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, these drugs can inhibit the action of this enzyme so acetylcholine levels within the synaptic cleft can be increased. So when this acetylcholine levels are going to be increased, they act on these postsynaptic receptors because they are going to just act like the depolarizing drugs, they further increase the block produced by depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So when we use the acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, they will increase the block of depolarizing drugs. Now let us take the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. What is their action on the postsynaptic receptors? So when these drugs are going to acting on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, they will block the receptors. In presence of acetylcholine esterase inhibitors, the raised levels of the acetylcholine can compete with these uh, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So when acetylcholine is going to bind to these receptors, these drugs are not able to bind, so their block is going to be reversed. So acetylcholine esterase inhibitors can decrease the block, thereby they can reverse the block produced by non-depolarizing drugs. That's why acetylcholine esterase inhibitors like the neostigmine acts as an antidote for these non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. Sixth one is the side effect profile. Depolarizing neuromuscular blockers because they are going to decrease the rate of contraction of the heart, they produce a bradycardia, whereas non-depolarizing drugs because they are going to increase the rate of contraction, they produce a tachycardia. So this is one of the quite opposite difference between the depolarizing and non-depolarizing. And similarly, depolarizing drugs like the saxamethonium can produce few of the special side effects like uh, post-operative pain because they produce the initial muscle fasciculations. 
and it can produce a hyperkalemia again because of the persistent depolarization and it can also produce a malignant hyperthermia because of the excessive release of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. All these side effects are because of the depolarizing action of uh, saxamethonium. On the other hand, non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are having somewhat less side effects and they can produce some bronchospasm and hypotension. Particularly, these two side effects are more pronounced with the D tubocurarine. Seventh one is the duration of action. Depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are having only one drug that is a succinylcholine, which is also called a saxamethonium, which is a short acting neuromuscular blocker. On the other hand, non-depolarizing drugs can be classified into three types, long-acting, medium-acting and short-acting. Long-acting drugs mainly include the D-tubocurarine, pancuronium, pipicuronium and doxacurium. Medium-acting drugs include the vicuronium, rocuronium, atracurium and short-acting drugs mainly include the mevacurium. In this way, in the non-depolarizing, we have the drugs which are having long duration of action as well as short duration of action. So these are the various differences and we have the similarities between the depolarizing as well as non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.